Welcome back, Acorn fans, to another exhibition match. This time we're going to be on Island, watching Jericoon versus Wobas. And Island is a map we have not seen very much of. It's not a particularly popular map. Kind of small, as you can see, it's very circular. Has expansions pretty much ringed around the entire map. The main bases to the west and east. Jericoon starting out in the east side of the map, Wobas starting in the west side of the map. Wobas starting out as Vekir, and in case the name is unfamiliar, yes, Wobas is a fairly new player. This is apparently his fourth game, but I sounded like he was actually doing pretty well. He's actually learning very quickly, so I figured I'd show off, see what he's doing, and possibly give some tips if he needs them. And Jericoon going for Grecken very quickly, and Wobas, very early economy going on. This is an assassin mode match, by the way. And Wobas not sending his Akron out. At first, neither is Jer no, Jericoon is sending his Akron very quickly to scout, and Wobas is not. Well, he is sending his, Jer his Akron a bit further. No, he is scouting. Wonderful. Okay, he is definitely scouting, so he knows what he's doing there. And J Raccoon just getting his economy set up. He's very slowly getting that up. Well, Wobas already has his economy set up, and very quickly going for a depot. Well, that's a little bit unusual. Or very quickly going for a, for a foundation, rather, not actually a depot. He would need to have one of these over on Q-Plasma to make a depot work. Depots cost 40 Q-Plasma, so we'd right away be out of Q-Plasma. That wouldn't really work out very well, now would it? He wouldn't have any Q-Plasma to build vehicles with. But the foundation on its own is still good. I mean, it does give him some healing if he does get harassed early on. Granted, against Grekum, this... You know what? On a map like this, this could happen. This is a very small map for rush distance. It's... 256 units wide, and it's got a very direct path to rush with, so I wouldn't be surprised if Jericoon did go for uh, at least an early like, half-committed octo-rush. Wobas, on the other hand, not going for a rush himself. He is getting a depot early on, does not have the Q-Plasma to make it work, though, so I'm not sure if that's a mistake he's going to correct now, or if he's going to just have to deal with that later on, but he probably will go back in time and move one of these RPs over to Q-Plasma so he can actually build that depot and make use of it rather than just have it there, doing nothing. Well, Jericoon does have his progen duo set up, getting his early economy going, or at least getting his early octos going. Building up some early octos, but it's hard to tell whether or not they are they are being used for economy. Never mind, I wasn't sure for a sec if he was going to be building economy or just going for, like I said, a very quick harassment attack, a very quick rush. Because in a map like this, you'd get away with that. You really could. It's quite small. I... I'm a little bit surprised neither player has gone for that, but neither player has gone for that. And Wilbas has no Q-Plasma to build this up. He appears to be going back. He might be going back to fix his mistake when it comes to Q-Plasma. I'm not sure. But he really needs to have a Q-Plasma RP here. At least one. There we go. Jumping that over, he will be fine. Jericho, on the other hand, not going for anything particularly tech-heavy. And just getting another... Well, he's going to try to get another Liquid Crystal RP when he gets the chance. Because in general, as I mentioned before, Liquid Crystal RPs are the safe bet. When you have money, you get Liquid Crystal RPs to get you more money. Because Liquid Crystal is what you need to build RPs. But Q-Plasma, of course, you need for tech. However, every Q-Plasma RP you build is another ADLC you haven't spent on getting more LC. Which means you really usually want to get Q-Plasma RPs when you're planning on building a bunch of units for tech. When you're just booming economy, you only want Liquid Crystal. That's all you ever want. However, in Wobas's case, he is building up some vehicles, getting early tech, and he, ne he needs that. Jericho, on the other hand, is not really making use of that. He is just building up his economy, getting what he can, and that only requires that he get like a crystal. So he's doing that, right? Now, Wobas, on the other hand, I don't think he actually sent his Akron into Jericho's base at any point. I think he's kept it entirely on the south side of the map. He might have sent it in and moved it back, which isn't a bad idea, but he doesn't need to. He really should just move it in, because Jericho has no defenses right now. He's no, got no Octos in place. I mean, Wobas has a fair amount in place to stop Jericho from seeing what's going on, though even then it's not doing too much. Jericho just patrolling his Octopod, or his, I should say his Guardian Akron, back and forth between the two expansions in the northeast and south, or northwest and southwest. And Wobas now finally prepared to deal with that, able to take care of that Akron if he wanted to, but Jericho appears to have moved back. Yes, he has! Moved it back into his base, kept it out of reach, so there's nothing that Wobas can really do short of a, a full-on attack, which I really would recommend doing, or at least a, a harassment attack. Because right now, Wobas is very behind in economy, he is going for... he went for an early depot. And when you go for an early depot, because this is the two-minute mark right now, I mean, we're looking at the two-minute mark, Wobas' point of view, this is a very early depot. When you build a very early depot, the point is to 
just go for a very early harassment, or just very early attack. You want to basically try to win within the first five minutes. Or at least get yourself in a position where you can't lose within the first five minutes. That's kind of how the game is played when you do the strategy, and he's... I'm not sure if he realizes that, because early depots are a risky strategy. On a map like Island, as I mentioned before, a small map can work, but you need to actually make it work. You need to go for the you need to go on the offensive. You need to attack. Right now, Jerkin's getting a reef, and that pretty much nullifies it. Though, admittedly, he could teleport the Zion Pulsar back here and get rid of some of these RPs, or at least heavily damage them. That wouldn't be a bad idea. But now, second reef being built up. At this point, Wobas, at the three-minute mark, about a minute and a half down from where J-Raccoon is, he could build up this, this... He is getting Skip Teleport. He's probably going to go for a Direct Assault. Getting another Liquid Crystal RP and no further Zion Pulsers. <sighs> kind of risky. It looks like he's moving his Akron in just to scout out finally, figure out where he can attack. And he's going to teleport a Zion Pulsar in, probably into the back side of the base here. Actually, no, no, there's no room behind the island. That's or on the lower ground. There's no real accessible low ground. That's by design. But he might move back here, right at the back, and then take out some of these RPs as best he can. The Oshers have a hard time dealing with that, actually. But the problem is more the reefs. The fact that Wobas simply won't be able to deal with enough damage to actually make it worthwhile. And I don't know why he hasn't teleported into his Iron Pulsar. In fact, he's... Has he undone getting Skip Teleport? No, he's just further in the future where it hasn't propagated yet. Because, like I said, he needs that Skip Teleport and needs to use it to take care of what Jericho has. And Jericho has a lot! Jericho actually getting a Fire Pot at the 6-minute mark! Zion Pulsars can't do anything about this. So Jerakun, I think, has pretty much got this game in the bag. I'm a bit surprised Wobas has not been doing anything more with this. Why is he not attacking? Is it just inexperience, or is the replay messed up? I don't think the replay's messed up. The replay's probably fine. But Wobas appears to have not realized just how much he needs... No, actually, this is because of Wobas. Because Wobas did not build a lot of economy early on. Jerakun did. So Jerakun's now having that pay off, and Wobas did not have did not punish J-Raccoon for what he did. He has a chance right now, right this minute, if he teleports in. If and only if he teleports in. Otherwise, this reef is going to be built too soon, and there's nothing that he can do. Wobas needs to skip teleport. This design pulse skip teleport. It needs to teleport in. It needs to teleport in now. There we go. Now it's teleporting in. The reef is being built. There's no other defensive units. One of the subjects is being attacked. Well, it was briefly being attacked. The RP is getting attacked. Jeragoon getting someone punished. Losing an RP. Actually, no defensive units being built up right now. Jericho will be going back and building up some octaves to deal with this, I'm sure. Or keeping this up. No, this would be remaining as a reef, but he is going to be trying to deal with this as best he can. This is his point of view. And he is moving. He's deep in his units, and those will be able to take care of the Zion Bolser. So, not really able to punish J Raccoon at all. Wobas pretty much wasted that strategy, unfortunately. So, Wobas, as. He might have a chance to get out of this, but it's going to be a tough uphill battle if he does. J Raccoon, on the other hand. He's doing quite well right now. He's We saw already he's going to very quickly get advanced structures. He has advanced structures now. He's going to quickly get Aspire and quickly get Pharopods. Wobas, on the other hand, looks like he might be trying to get an aerial control center and build up from there. I would not recommend doing that. I'd recommend... I'd recommend getting some Teth Pulsers. I'd recommend staying at Depot, getting Teth Pulsers and building up an economy and trying to just stay alive. It's going to be a tough battle. It's going to be really on the back foot. But building other foundations a bit of a waste. Just build more RPs, build some Teth Pulsers, defend those RPs until you can build up. And at least build up enough to harass to bring Jericho back down a peg. And then you can go for a straight up attack. But that's not what's going on here. Uh, Wobas is going for a hidden expansion. Not a bad idea. Well, sort of hidden expansion. It's Shinbi or Teth Veer, so he doesn't have a Zion Veer there to actually build Zion Pulsers with. Sorry, not Zion Pulsers. He doesn't want to build Zion Pulsers from there. He wants to build RPs from there, because that's what the Zion Veers also do. And that's what the Zion Builders can do that's actually relevant in this situation, because the Shin Veer need to build a foundation, then build an Annex, and then build another Zion Veer. But no, more Zion Pulses are in fact what's being built. So it wasn't a mistake to say that, but it was a mistake for Wobas to do it. Because right now, a Farapod is in play. Jericoon has his Farapod, he's going to be using it, and he's exploring around. He's going to find his expansion, or he's going to look for a hidden expansion, at least he's not really going to find anything other than the Shin Veer and the Teth Veer. Which is a good mix to have, at least for as long as they survive, which is going to be... Well, they're dead now. But they got three shots off. <laughs> this wasn't entirely useless. But yeah, that far pod's basically not able to be fended off. More Zion Pulsers being built. But like I said, Teth Pulsers are the thing you need to build. If you're going to build anything, it's Teth Pulsers. Now, Auto Defense being researched, not a terrible idea. You could build a Bastion, I suppose. That would also be handy. But really... Teth Pulser. 
Teth Pulsar is what is needed right now. Zion Pulsar, if you're gonna build any vehicle, I should say. Really, what I'd build is enough to meet shield and then a bunch of Teth Veer for defense. Like, just defend against the Far Pod with a bunch of Teth Veer and only have the Teth Pulsars, maybe two or three of them, as a meat shield. And even then, they're not a great meat shield, but at least it's something. Or possibly Zion, no, Zion Torture might be too expensive for a meat shield. Now, Jericho, on the other hand, he is expanding towards the north. He's exploring around with his Fire Pod, making sure he doesn't lose anything. Harassing with the Octopod. Actually, dealing quite a bit of damage to Wobas' Akron. Wobas will likely be moving this back. He's going to be jumping back and moving this into his main base, so it's at least within the range of the Foundation. And J Raccoon is going to be, from here, just building up more units, probably expanding a bit more and maybe getting legal class. I don't think so. Players don't often go for legal class nowadays, actually. But he might do it. He might just do it. He has knocked upon a fire pot. He might just get Lego class, get Seppi Legos, and attack with a bunch of Seppi Legos. Use that to try to win. That is definitely a valid strategy. I just don't know if he's going to go for it. However, Wobas setting himself up in a pretty nice spot. Harassing out, taking out one of the Octos, heavily damaging the other two. Not a bad harassment point for Wobas, however. It is something that Jericho can deal with. He can move his fire pot in place. Now, granted, it looks like Wobas, if he doesn't actually move these... If he undoes that teleportation, which he might just do, he's, they will still be in a good position to deal with these Farpods, and they still are! That Farpod, once again, under the right position, so Wobas able to take care of two of the Autos now, but J Raccoon will be trying to get rid of them. However, the Autos have gone down. Nicely done, J Raccoon going to be moving back once again, able to scare away the Star Impulsors ultimately, so these Autos will be able to get in, but still... That's not bad. Wobas should have teleported away those Zion Pulsers, however. He really needs to get the Zion Pulsers out of the way. He has to skip teleport on them. He needs to teleport them. And that's what he's doing. Good. He saves them at the last... Well, not quite the last second, but pretty close to. Because you didn't... When you're playing Vector, especially on the back foot like this, you do not want your units to die. In general with Vector, you don't, you don't want your vehicles to die. Ever. If you can avoid it at all, avoid it. Because they're expensive. They take a while to build. But once you have a good dozen... Especially two dozen, but especially... It's just a dozen, even good dozen of them, and gate tech, you've won the game. But you need to have them survive that long, and that's the really tough part, especially the way Akron's played out, because your opponent can very easily go and kill your units that you had already thought you'd save. And Wobas looks like he's ultimately not saving those Zion Pulses, but that's fine, they weren't ultimately being attacked, ultimately destroying this expansion, Jericho jumping back to the 9 minute mark until the past edge, and not able to save that, not even going for it, however, instead going, hunting the Akron not going to be that useful. The Akron able to retreat back, get to the Foundation support, and Jericho losing this north base. That's a lot of damage being dealt there, so Wobas able to take care of half of that expansion by the 10 minute mark. But the Farpod in place and able to take this out. Wobas needs to teleport these guys back, but he doesn't have the current energy for it. This is what I meant. It's really hard to keep your units alive. Able to save one of them, however, but still, it's hard to keep your units alive in this game because you need to, you want to harass, you want to take your, your opponent's stuff, but your opponent can just go back and deal with what you have. So in this case, Wobas actually got a little bit lucky, because Jericho had... He might have been counting on this, but Jericho had already used up a lot of Chrono Energy in the Unplayable Pass, or near the Unplayable Pass Edge. But getting Chrono Reporting now, at, at this point, Wobas has lost the game. His only hope, his only hope, which he might still have, is to take out all of these Q-Plasma resource processors. And even then, that's a bit of a stretch. These re well, actually... No, neither of these reefs are in range of it. So he could take out these QPRPs and nothing would happen to him. At the Unplayable Past Edge with Zion Pulsers, if he manages to do that. If and only if he manages to do that, he will be able to survive this because then Jericoon will not be able to chronoport back any units. The chronoporting tech will have been a waste. But right now Jericoon can and is chronoporting back units. And this is what I meant, getting rid of these vehicles. Nothing that Wobas can do about this. Losing these vehicles and some Teth... He has some Teth Pulsers in his base. This is good. He has Teth Pulsers in his base. He's got his Shin Turcher, which isn't going to be that useful. The Octopod... Okay, it's useful against the Octopod, but it's not that useful against the Farapod. So if the Teth Turchers fend off the Farapod, the Shin Turcher detects the Farapod and then takes out the Octopods, it could work. And by, bear in mind, I'm pretty sure the Zion Pulsar is not actually here. That Zion Pulsar, I believe, is the one that was destroyed by Jericho's Chronoport. So Wobas in a very tricky spot right now. Like, like I said, getting rid of those Q Plasma RPs at this point would pretty much cause it might cause a paradox. Might. I don't think it will because I think Jericho had enough Q Plasma to get rid of that. And even then, Wobas doesn't have the. Well, he doesn't seem to have a current energy to do that. Moving his units instead into position to try to defend against this, but really. 
When you're fighting against chronoporting, what you need to do is guess where your opponent will chronoport to and where they'll attack from, which usually is going to be your resource processors, and set up your units to defend that before before that point is even in the unplayable past. That's all you can really do. Eventually, your your opponent will run out of Q plasma, will run out of units, and you can counterattack. But you're on the defensive for a little while, and I've seen it done well. It's actually one of the things when Numbers was playing that the first game I casted him involved him basically defending chronoporting as Vekir by being very careful about building up units, keeping them in his base, and making sure that priority targets were already going to be intercepted. But Wobas not really doing that. He's instead moving forward, moving out of position for where Jerakun will likely go to. And Jerakun as well, getting his expansion built up, getting his expansion to the north built up again, and another one to the northeast. So Jerakun is really just a matter of time when he wants to win. That's all that matters is when Jerakun wants to win this game, because it's up to him. Wobas still has the weaker economy. He's finally re he's finally building up halfway decent economy, but 13 minutes in the game and he only has half a dozen RPs. His all-in strategy did not work out. Really, at this point, his only chance, as it has been for the entire game so far, is for Jerakun to basically let him win. Or at least leave him open enough, leave him unintended enough that Wobas has a chance to rebuild or to harass. But even then, any harassment Jerakun is just going to chronoport back and deal with. Not that it even matters, because Jerakun looks like he's going for an uppercut with these Farapods and Sepipods, and that should just finish the game right there. But we'll see. Jericho not actually spending money to chronoport them yet. Getting weaponry instead, so I expect... Well, it's pretty obvious what's going to happen. A chronobomb is what's going to happen. There'll be a chronobomb in the main base, take out most of these forces, and then Jericho's just going to rush in here and tear apart all these RPs, and Wobus will have nothing to build with. So, really just got to see that coming. There's going to be a chronobomb happening within probably the next... Well, the next minute. Although Jericho jumping back... Not even the next minute, now! In fact, chronobomb coming into the main base and... No! Chronobombing the RPs? Why did he do that? I mean, he can take care of the main base, but really what he wants to do is get rid of the main base. I should say chronobomb the main base, and then get rid of the RPs. So the RPs are free targets. I don't know why he did it this way. Or chronobomb around the Akron, that way Wobas has no way around that. But Wobas getting his base chronobomb, from Wobas' point of view, would be in about five seconds. But yeah, that was a bizarre way to place it. It really should have been placed right here. I don't know why he didn't place it there. Also, because that means his units are getting... Well, his chronobomb is getting attacked on the way, and it's getting attacked more frequently on the way, so it has, it has a larger chance of failing in a later iteration. But regardless, Wobas has still pretty much lost this game. I mean, Jerakun, he does have... He does have to kill all this stuff, but he's destroyed the rest of the base. And that's... Man, that's going to be the game, pretty much. Once Jerakun takes another pass and tears everything apart, he's won. He's not doing that yet, but once he does, he's won. Like I said, I just don't know why he chronobombed the stuff, the priority targets. I mean, if he chronobombed everything but the RPs, and then went and killed the RPs, there would have been nothing that Wobus could have done. Granted, right now there's pretty much nothing that Wobus can do, but even more so, there would have been nothing he could have done. Because priority targets, like, RPs are things you want to kill, but they're not things you want to worry about the rest of the time. Regardless, Wobas still lost his Akron, and that's pretty much the game. The Akron is dead, well, up at the 15 minute mark. I mean, once this blue time comes along, then Wobas will have no Akron and no way of controlling anything. Wobas, whoever, in the Unplayable Pass and seeing what happened, but that's... that's the game. I'm just surprised, I guess players just talking about what Chrono Bomb is, Wobas having never seen it before. But really, Jerakun, 16 minute mark, and just looks like he's waiting for the stuff to chronoport back in. And now getting rid of it. So I guess that might have been why he chronobombed what he chronobombed, so he could just snipe it with units in place. But like I said, why not just get rid of all the defenders and then destroy the RPs? At that point, there's nothing that can kill your units, and the RPs go down. Regardless, Jerakun has still won this game. That's still it. And oh, Chrono Bomber actually pointing out in the chat, good point. Kramer pointing out that he imagined that Jerakun's arm, or Jerakun probably imagined that Wobus's army was near the RPs, which is, as I mentioned before, where they should be. That is the priority target when you're dealing with any sort of chronoporting. That's not where they were, and actually that helped. Honestly, in that case, Wobus actually didn't do the wrong thing. Ultimately, it, well, it didn't pan out, but had Wobus gotten a stronger economy and a larger army, and also more expansions, that would have helped too. 
he would have been able to actually keep his army around and take out the forces that were attacking him, thus stopping them from dealing a whole lot of damage. So it's... I still don't think it was the right option. Clearly it was a bad option. He really should have gone for having his army near the RPs, but in this case, it did pan out. Sort of. Or would, it could it would have panned out better than it would have, but still, Wolbass has lost this game. Either way, J. Raccoon had this game in the, has this game in the bag. So not bad for Wolbass, especially given that it's his fourth match. Not bad. Main suggestions would be don't focus on an all-in attack unless you're going to focus on an all-in attack. If you're going for an all-in, go for that all-in actually commit to it. Otherwise, go for economy. Go heavy for economy, and just try to defend as best as possible, because the economy is going to be much more useful to you, ultimately, than anything else. Unless you can win in the first five minutes, and are planning to win in the first five minutes with an all-in attack, and on a map like Island, you can. But unless that's what you're planning on doing, and you commit to it, and you do it, don't do it. Don't all-in. Economy first, worry about all-ins later. I hope you enjoyed that, everybody, and have a good night.